Why Speech, Ethics Group Why Speech is based on the intention to do no harm. We've all used speech in a manner that may create harm, lying to keep others from knowing what's really going on, gossiping with the intention of putting someone down or satisfying our desire to be recognized, stealing time and attention by chattering on and on, or trying to convince others to meet our own needs at the expense of their own. Why Speech includes all the ways we use our voices, including online and in writing. The basic foundation of why speech is honesty or truthfulness. Dishonesty is exaggeration, minimizing, omitting, or lying with the intention of presenting a distortion of reality. It can take the form of white lies to avoid embarrassment or exposure, half-truths to keep from being caught, or seemingly harmless things said at the expense of others. We may say more than we really know to be true in the hopes of appearing smarter or more confident in our position or feeling. Sometimes we say something before we know the truth. Dishonesty has to do with our intention in speech. Are we motivated by greed, fear, or confusion? Or are we motivated by a sincere desire to express what's true, what's useful, what's kind, and what's timely? Wise speech means we speak with the intention of not causing harm, and of fostering safety and security in our community. In active addiction, we develop the habit of dishonesty. We lie to cover up or mislead others about the nature and extent of our using or behavior. We lie so we can satisfy the craving our fixation feeds by hiding our actions, our feelings, or the amount of money and effort we put into satisfying our craving. Many of us lie just for the sake of lying because the truth represents a reality we can't tolerate. We get trapped by our secrets, and for many of us, having a double life becomes an addiction all its own. This is why honesty is foundational to recovery. Dishonesty is one of the habits that allow our addictive behaviors to flourish. As a result, recovery needs to start with an honest appraisal of exactly what lies we told and what dishonesty we spread during our addictive behavior. The Buddha provided some guidelines for wise speech, in addition to truthfulness. He said to avoid slander and gossip, recognizing that such unwise speech causes conflict and makes the community less safe. So when we talk about others, we can ask ourselves, what's our intention? Is it to cause division or exclusion? Is it to cause shame or embarrassment in someone else, or to somehow make ourselves look better at somebody else's expense? It's possible to talk about other people with the intention of kindness, generosity, and compassion, to seek understanding or support for another. Gossip and slander do not contribute to this and instead cause harm. Similarly, idle chatter and saying things just to be heard or recognized or to take up time when we're uncomfortable can lead people to dismiss or ignore us and may create impatience and intolerance in our community. Why speech is also reflected in the tone we use when we talk. If we express ourselves in harsh, angry, or abusive ways, we may not be heard even if we're being truthful. Speaking gently, with the intention of kindness, fosters a community of friendliness and safety. There are always exceptions, of course, and why speech also includes using a loud and strong voice when you need to protect your safety. It may sound like why speech is primarily about discerning when not to speak, but this isn't always the case. Many of us grew up in families where it wasn't safe to talk openly about our thoughts and feelings. Some, because of certain experiences or cultural conditioning, have been taught that we don't have permission to use our voices or lack the power to speak and be heard. For many of us, practicing wise speech may mean learning how to use our voices that have been silenced and to wisely communicate the needs and boundaries we've gotten used to keeping hidden. At times, This includes speaking up for others when harm is done. Many of us, in an effort to be liked, for fear of rocking the boat, or due to the exhaustion of repeatedly not being seen and heard, have favored being nice over being honest and true to ourselves. Why speech teaches us that speaking up, even when it's hard, is sometimes the best choice. And that speech is never truly kind if we cause harm to ourselves. Finally, why speech is careful listening. It is also knowing when not to speak when a wise response isn't available to us. We must listen with compassion, understanding, and receptivity. It can be really helpful to observe how much of the time we spend listening to someone else is actually spent judging them 
or planning what we're going to say in response. Deep listening, without selfishness or an agenda, is an act of generosity that lets us build true connection. Wise action, ethics group. Wise action is also based in the intention to do no harm and to foster compassion, loving kindness, generosity, and forgiveness. We try to do what's skillful and avoid actions that are unskillful. Wise action asks that we try to make choices based on understanding and not unthinking habits or ignorance. The Buddha suggested that we make a commitment to avoid five specific actions that cause harm, a commitment which is known as the five precepts. We commit to the five precepts as our basic ethical system. One, we set the intention to avoid taking the life of another living being or from causing harm to ourselves or another living being. Two, we set the intention to avoid taking what is not freely given or stealing. Three, we set the intention to avoid causing harm through our sexual conduct and to be aware of the consequences and impact of our sexual activity and desire. Four, we set the intention of being honest, of not lying, and of not using speech in a harmful way. Five, we set the intention to avoid the use of intoxicants and intoxicating behavior that cloud our awareness. We need to continually reflect on and question the intentions behind our actions. We may have moments of clarity, but these can quickly pass when old habits or thoughts resurface. We commit to constantly reminding ourselves of our intention to wise action, to act in ways that are non-harming. Wise Livelihood, Ethics Group The final factor in the ethical group is wise livelihood, which focuses on how we support ourselves in the world. Again, the intent is to avoid causing harm. For most of us, our work occupies so much of our time and attention, so how we choose to make a living takes on special importance. Understanding the principle of karma and knowing that unethical activity gives rise to harmful karma, whatever choices or circumstances lead us to a particular job need to be recognized as having karmic consequences. We try to avoid jobs that give rise to suffering and seek work that does no harm or reduces suffering. The Buddha mentions five kinds of livelihood to avoid. Trading in weapons or instruments of killing, trafficking in or selling human beings, killing of other beings, making or selling addictive drugs, or business and poison. We're encouraged to avoid occupations based on dishonesty or injury. Whatever our job is, we can practice it mindfully, with an intention of non-harm, of easing suffering, and of compassion. This means developing an attitude toward our occupation beyond just the money we make. We can develop an approach of service and caring about the effects of our actions on others, both within and outside our workspaces. Wise livelihood is not about judging ourselves or others for their choice of work or trying to limit their choices. Instead, we try to understand why and how we engage in whatever occupation we practice. Whatever work we do, we can maintain an intention of benefiting others.